This is the stuff dreams are made of. I'm writer collector Ryan Condal. And I'm writer collector Dave Mandel. And you're listening to the original movie prop collecting podcast. I did it. How about that? I listened. Awesome. I listened to the last show and I was like, movie prop collecting podcast. It's, it's good. Yeah. Brought there's to you a, by a yeah, to Prop it. Store. Yeah. I, prop I, store. I, but I was really thinking about it by Prop Store. Yeah. Um, how you doing? <laughs> Very good. Yeah. How are you? You are near the uh, the end of your uh, Los Angeles sojourn. Are you, this is uh, it, Dave. This is like it. The, the ticking clock at all? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm honestly I'm bummed. It's like it's been a really great month, and um, you know, I've seen uh, just like I mean, things like you know, I saw my brother like multiple times a week, and it's just like it hasn't been like that since you know 2019, really. Yeah. I mean, even even then, you know, and um, but the, you know, the, he and his girlfriend made really um, strong effort to uh, you know to come up a lot and see the girls and you know they really they get along with them and and all that so it was really nice and yeah it's weird it's like i feel like i mean i i had a great time it was just such an epic month it, it feels flew both by like it was though, a week but it flew by it, flew, it felt like a week it felt like a week yeah but also like with all the things that we did just like so you know it could have been three months the way it was so action crammed stuff you know with 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 you know activity and and social stuff and seeing people and it was it was a really great time i think you know now heading back and look you know london is home and it will be for the foreseeable um but i do miss this place and i think i didn't realize how i don't want to say homesick because it it, it it sounds sort of mopey and morose but like <laughs> sort of like how much i miss this place and yeah. i think it's really the people you know, just like, I just have stronger relationships here, you know, than, um, outside of my immediate family, love you guys. Um, then, uh, uh, you know, then, then I presently do, you know, in London and we have, we've, we've made great friends in London and I have old friends there too, you know, specifically collector friends. Um, but it's sort of just on the whole, like we just, yeah, we just have very strong roots here, you know, you and Bart and, and, you know, and others and others and others. Um, so it's, no, it's there was something, there was something very enjoyable about obviously the very planned things that we managed to do together, but there was also things of just like, Oh, Hey, you're here. And which was very yeah. funny. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, As yeah, running, yeah. running into each other yes, at, uh, exactly. at a, yeah. at a auction preview. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, but, um, and I've enjoyed our little, you know, this weird sort of, I don't know, road season of our podcast, uh, doing all of this with with the uh, with your curtain, your magic curtain, curtain. <laughs> backdrop. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah, on on we march. Uh, so uh, well, we have a we have a exciting lot to cover here dave but what yep. let's let me ask what's new in props well i think you know what's new in props and anybody that I looked i think at the uh the title of the episode uh well we had the uh we just got done today is sunday the 18th and so this has been four days of the prop store auction so what's new in props i think we'll start with winnings maybe is to start there what do you think Hell yeah so start there uh how'd you do i know how you did but tell the audience how you did <laughs> yeah uh i won the bat wing yeah it's mine yeah, um, and I'm very thrilled. It looked like there was one person bidding against you, which is, or was there two people, yes. and then and then one. Okay, it was one. Okay. Yes, my sense is that it was one online bidder. Uh, that it's funny. I think we were both in that place of seeing if anybody was going to bid, and because uh, it felt for a little bit there like it was just going to kind of you know go down as a pass, and a, and a, a bunch of the larger things, especially that early in the day. I think it got people warmed up as the day went on but um it, it wouldn't have been surprised at that point in the auction if it happened because it's, it's a couple of things were sort of you know ticking by and i think deals were made after after but for whatever reason there just wasn't a lot of action right you know rushing in early and it's in the day giant i mean it, it i mean I, yes. I, I love it but it's big i mean there, we talked about it before we talked about it during yeah. and now that you own it yeah. it's big i mean it just it yeah, is yeah i mean what i it think is. it's yeah. the biggest is it the biggest single piece that either one of us own i mean that's bigger than Oh, by lots. Yeah. By, by a lot. I mean, it's, it's, it's taller or I should say it's wider than the tallest mannequin I have. Yeah. 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 I mean, mannequins just sit better because they can kind of stand in a corner. So right. mannequins are big. And they're they can stand thinner up. too. I mean, just yeah. area wise, I yeah. just cubic, yeah. cubic volume. You are now officially winning. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem for future Ryan, frankly. And look, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but I, it was worth, I, I had enough, I can't really say much, but I had enough input going into the day 
that I felt confident enough to like, you know, give this a shot for a few years and see whether we can make it happen. And, you know, this will, this will be displayed in a house that we do not yet own in a place that we, we don't even know where that is. Um, so it's just, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be on a shelf for, for a few sure. years, but I looked at it, it, it despite, you know, the crazy expense. If I just I, looked at I know it. it's a joke, but if I can clear enough space, I'm going to take it for a while. If I can clear Fan- enough space. Yeah. I got, I'm Fantastic. really going to look at it because it would be very fun just to have it for a couple of years Fantastic. to the point where I get sick of it. And I'm just like, God, this thing is so big. I got to get, get this thing fucking yeah. out of here. I feel like it would scratch an itch and just never like, I'd like I'd all the fun of owning it. And then all the, what the fuck am I doing with this what thing? And then get yeah. rid of it just as you come back. But I don't know if I have the room for it, but it would be yeah. fun. Um, were oh, you surprised? Were the, the bidding go the way you thought? I mean, I, I don't know how comfortable you are saying where you were, were you, where did it land vis-a-vis your high? Were you prepared to go a little further? What were you thinking going in as, it was happening where were you yeah i don't i don't know i was like i didn't i didn't think about it much leading up to the auction which sort of surprised me because i think i was sort of at peace with the well if it happens it happens and i'm not gonna yeah i'm literally not gonna see it for years so it didn't have this sort of you know new toy in the toy store because even in victory which now we we have i'm I'm still not going to see it uh for a while so i think it would have been easier to accept a loss on that one because it is a bit of a buying stock or something like that it's a bit it's a bit it's a bit of a paper paper victory, at least for now. Well, it's not um, a paper victory only because had this thing, I'll simply say at this number, I'm not talking about a number you didn't like, meaning had it gone over my sense of it was you certainly weren't looking to go over and f- tell me if I'm wrong. I got the sense that you were not looking to go much over a low four hammer, which would have been a five sort of a number basically. Yeah. yeah. And I've, and even that you were, you were yeah, it's timidly yeah, I mean, this, approaching. Yeah, this is the biggest thing I've ever bought. Right. I mean, I know you've 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 been operating in this stratosphere for some time, <laughs> um, but I, oh, so Dave, please, please uh, don't tell your dad. <laughs> My dad is going to lose his shit when he finds out you bought one of these things. He did not care for for yes. Michael Keaton as Batman. He did yes. not understand that casting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my dad texted me, "Did you wing the bat wing?" So we we just have a much we have just a much very uh, different. Have di- yeah, well, my father situation. can't even text, but anyway, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> I said <laughs> to him, God. "Yes, but please don't tell Dave stuff." Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I um I, I I think I joked to you when we talked on the phone afterwards that I it it was below my max and it was below my actual max. <laughs> right. <laughs> Both maxes. Yes. <laughs> Both maxes. So yeah. I had to be pleased with that. I mean, look, it yeah. would have been great for. It would have been great for no one to bid and just to be able to do a deal offline because you know we 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 knew the seller and it was something that we you know, we could have chatted. Well, what about, I was going to say was if it had sold to me, I think at that number that you got it for and you had not won it and it dare I say disappeared, I thought you would have been pretty bummed. Yeah, like I'm not talking about it popping back up again next auction as things well we're seeing that left and right now, which I think is something I would like to kick towards the back end of the show but some things we i think one of the points we need to sort of start talking about a little bit not specifically prop store alone i think we're seeing it across all of these auctions both within their own auctions but also inter auctions someone buying over here and then putting it over here and vice versa right and i don't think that's helping i don't think it's helping the consigners i'm not sure it's helping the uh the the auction houses either so that was one takeaway we'll kick that down but i feel like if this had gone away and you hadn't gotten it around that number you'd have been bummed that was my sense of it yeah without without, you know yeah Yeah, and i just like i also had i you know i had a very i relatively confident feeling going into the auction based on some conversations that i had that my other big piece was going to sell Yes. which was the Stormtrooper Blaster. So I knew that I would immediately have some defrayed cost going which on. Which it did. I guess we should it, point that out on the flip side of it sold for the opening bid, which was a, a great opening bid. And I think no Stormtrooper gun has ever... Yeah, uh, it's a record. So, yeah, it's a record for, it's a record. for Jedi and guns, what, but it's it's a record for, I think, Stormtrooper in general, I believe, right? Yeah, I, I, yes. Star Wars or Jedi. Yeah, so yes. it was a gorgeous example, but it got its bid. Uh, and by the way, again, something else to talk about uh, at, on the back end, a little bit of this sort of... Uh, the single bids and just sort of, the, again, the different yeah. philosophies of auction. But anyway, um, so you didn't know you had that house money, but before the day ended, you knew you had that house money. Yes, so correct. that was a good Yeah, thing. so it was exciting. And um, and I, so I, I was relatively confident it was going to sell. I didn't know for how much, but I, I didn't think there would be, 
if there was action, it would be a couple of bids just because it right. was, it was a record and what, it, you know, and again, a great piece, but it's not, you know, it's but not right off the bat, knocking Skywalker that off, right, but right off the bat, not knocking that off the price of what you paid for the Batwing makes it excellent, eminently reasonable right yeah. off, right, right. The get go. If you said, Hey, I'm going to buy this thing for 200 and a, and a gun. It's not, that's, that's a great way of thinking about yeah. it, I guess. Yeah. I yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's where, it, that's where it landed. Yeah. So I think in the end, sort of everything kind of, you know, went, went my way ultimately. And, um, look, I'm, I'm incredibly happy. I was really excited about it. Uh, I wish, you know, I wish I lived in a reality where it could be immediately sent to me and we could be, we could have the, paint the wall yellow podcast where i we we, we you know you could live. still just paint a wall yellow i mean i'm not sure anyone would enjoy it but you could still yeah. have just a yellow wall i was actually yeah. thinking like do do i do because they have all these gorgeous photos of it do i do some kind of i don't know photo collage or something and like frame you know frame it to like in the in the interim or something like that to have some kind if of you put a picture in a frame and it kind of leaned it in your display kind of next to or behind the the your uh your bat cowl i think mm. that would be fine i don't think you need to clear wall space for like a giant frame yeah. thing i think if you yeah. just acknowledged that you had it it's fun look i know it sounds silly but i think the time will fly by i mean you're going to be yeah. in the house with that thing very quickly so i'm not yeah, yeah. that worried yeah. about that part of it but yeah. Uh, yeah i think a nice little photo of it, a reference photo would be kind of cool yeah just some, something to yeah. like say hey i own that thing and um so that's very all very cool uh and yeah, you I, oh go ahead i sorry. i I I think there was one bidder. Um, I, there was there was more action than I think I was ready for, given how long it took him to bid. Because I think I'm assuming it's a him. Uh, we we were both kind of waiting on the sidelines. I was on the phone. I think he knew there was a phone bidder, sort of waiting, and then he towed in, and then I kind of I kind of so he placed the first bid. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Because I wasn't going to place the first bid. Right. I, I was going to see if somebody did, and then decide whether I was getting into the action. Because if somebody didn't, then I think I was going to try to handle it offline. Sure. Even if I was bidding against somebody offline, I'd rather do it there. So we, um, yeah, it was it was it was a pretty good punch back and forth for for a few bids. And look, you know, when you're in that stratosphere, the you know the 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 increments are 10k, and you're going up right. pretty pretty quickly. Um, uh, but it was, ex Once it was exciting. Once it started, was he bidding with alacrity? Was it moving no. along? No, no, it was slow. I was. And you were, yeah. Yes, I was, but it was, it, I think it was taking him two or three X as long to come in. And then at the end, they allowed a like quarter cut bid, which I had never seen before. Yeah, I hate which those just, cut bids. They drive yeah, me crazy. Just, yeah. Like, it, you know, again, uh, show weakness. Uh, uh, and this was like incredible weakness. And because there hadn't even been a cut bid, it wasn't like there was a cut bid and then I bid back or I cut bid or anything. It was just like, it was like, well, I guess, Bleh. much like the first bid, someone does have to be first with the cut bid. I mean, at yeah. some point, I guess if there's going to be it, it's my least favorite thing. In yeah, the world. you're like the yeah. World Series of Poker Table and yeah. like the blinds are up and big and whatever. And, you know, people are like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my next bet is double, double the big blind or triple the big blind. And this guy is coming in with like, I would like to ante. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought it was weird. And like, you knew it was at the end and it's like, okay, well, how many more bids is it going to take for me to well, you know, put the, put this to bed? So I, um, so I, you know, I bid, uh, I bid again and they, they, thankfully they didn't make it a full bid. They took a, they took the same increment. So it was that another, is, their system is different. The, uh, prop stores bidding is different than heritage's bidding. When heritage, every bidder is allowed one cut bid yeah, and then you can cut bid to get it back on track. But after that, it goes back to the amounts. Meaning if the bids are 10,000 and you do a $5,000 cut bid, the next bid is a $10,000 bid unless you cut bid either yeah. or. Uh, prop store, it is, I guess, at the auctioneer's discretion. So once the cut bidding happens, they reduce it to the cut bid level. So if the cut bid is down to 5000 for the rest of the auction, the bidding is at the $5,000 level, unless they, they have to specifically move it back. It's a different way of doing things. That yeah. is in their uh, their I don't know their their descriptions. I mean, it's nothing out of the ordinary. It just it's it's a little strange. It slows things down. I will tell you a funny story about something that I did not win, but something I bid on for a second. I was bidding for a, a okay. friend actually, um, 
And uh, I, or I'll, you know, we and we can talk about this result too, which was I was bidding for a buddy on the indie hat, the uh, the Temple of Doom hat. Which, oh, interesting. Uh, I don't think was, I knew was, this. Oh, yeah, uh, was really gorgeous piece. Obviously, I mean, I thought it was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Um, an interesting was the piece. friend you, Dave? Did you want two hats? Like you have <laughs> the two of other was uh, Sidney Mandel. Um, <laughs> um his favorite movie no um i i i i i was not me uh it was just uh somebody Do you also who, have to hide that from your dad that you bid for <laughs> I other just was people. bidding numbers <laughs> bidding for somebody else is the most fun thing in the world because it's, oh, yeah. it's just not your money you yeah. get all the uh you get all the sort of the the juice and the adrenaline and the whatever of the auction and it and just, not the bill yeah, yeah not the bill although but also, you did that but last also not time the loss you, too yeah you no, I know, that was crazy with yeah. the bill and yeah, then without for the about bill, a minute so. yeah <laughs> but uh so i was bidding for someone and it was really strange and i'll kind of give you the the, the quick version of it which is their number was lower than where it ended. So I was, I, I, I bid up to about around 400 as well. And then somebody, I think I bid 410. And the, I think initially there were two bidders and then there was me bidding for this other person and one other bidder. And I bid 410 and they bid 420. And then it sat there at 420. I was out and it sat there at 420 for a really, 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 really long time. And then the third bidder, or maybe a new fourth bidder, I, I, you know, you don't know. I wasn't watching. I was, I was on the phone. So I was listening. Um, I think I was in a car. So I was driving, talking. So I couldn't, there was nothing for me to see. Um, the, either a, another bidder came in but came in at the cut bid at 420. So then it was like 425. And this is how I now know this thing about it stayed at five and it went 425, 430, 35, oh 40, 45. And imagine, if you will, on every one of those, both parties took not, not all the way to the final warning like we're about to we're about to close it it wasn't like a, a, th a one two three we're about to close it but each bid was like i don't know hand wringing and it was so slow and it was like two guys bidding and neither of whom wanted to win as they went five thousand dollar increments so slowly to five hundred thousand and the winner bid 500,000. It was 495 and then 500. The winner got it for 500. And again, I'm just on the phone. I'm at this point, I'm just an innocent bystander. But I could not believe that the underbidder, the other guy, didn't bid 505 just yeah. to see if the yeah. winner's like, you know, line in the sand was 500. Like how do or you Or Dave I dare say at that point, go five ten, go back to the original. Sure, but my point and being like, is, try to be like oh, they didn't yeah, in the heart, right? You know? They didn't yeah. seem to want to do that at all. The, the yeah, tens yeah. was not even whatever, but it it was really funny. It just seemed like two people. I mean, again, they did bid, so congratulations. But it was just two guys. Uh, I don't know, assume guys that just it didn't seem like anybody wanted to win the damn thing. They do. Yes. I've never seen such tepid bidding, even though a huge record-breaking number. Yes. So yeah, and, but I, and really I did laughed. hear yeah. that the consigner, who I believe is the widow, right, uh, of the of uh, Dean Ferrandini. Uh, was in the room and was uh, rather delighted by the well, by the she, results. As, so as well, she should be with the number, right? Yes, but, but, uh, yeah. But it was it's uh, those things are always just nice to hear when somebody yes. comes in from the oh, outside. No, absolutely, you great. have this yeah. thing in your attic. You have no. I got to see that with the as the as the defeated underbidder with the batty trench coat, the yes. Roy Batty trench coat from Blade Runner years ago. Um, so I did, I, it was nice. Cause I think no, as an underbidder, you only feel your, your loss, but I did get a nice sort of tip of the hat from the right. family there because, you know, I made yeah, a lot of helped, money. That yeah. Day. You helped it along, but also, I mean, 
good for them. I mean, that's, I, I, I like to think that's life changing money in a good way. I mean, that's wonderful money. I mean, whether, I don't know what it's for, but it's great money. So good for, for them. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely wonderful. It was just very funny to see. And like I said, it got to an incredible number. It was just, it was slow and painful. It really made me laugh. Yeah. My question for you, Dave, yeah. is does this shake another hat out of the trees? What do you I, think? I would think so. I think this number certainly does. I really, you I, mean, saw... I think it's going to, I think it's going to shake a couple of bat wings out of the trees. I mean, like three or four of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are gonna plummet number when I'm gonna buy when they're like thirty thousand. It's gonna be like yeah. it's gonna be like uh, Adam West bat belts all over again when they, the <laughs> market comes crashing down. Um, no, I do think uh, this number this is this is a pretty spectacular number. I mean, I do think it'll always be the interesting thing, which is this is a very specific hat that screen matched to not only the stunt man but obviously to Harrison Ford, yes. um, and was just all over that movie in a great way. You know, multiple sequences, and I do think that counts in this case for a lot. So you know, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, I, I probably I had a similar experience probably to you, or a bunch of people. This typical sort of the auction ends a bunch of places that don't really cover this stuff. Yeah. start covering this stuff. And a bunch of people sent me different articles about the fedora doing that, knowing that I had a fedora yep. or, or knowing that I'm just, I don't even think idiot. I get, and, I get a mix of, was this you? I get that. I get, you know, that I get that one. I get, was this you? Um, and I also get, uh, did you see this? And it's just like, yes, I did. Yeah. I, did yeah. I was on the phone. Bidding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've known about it for months. Yeah, yeah. I, I was. I yeah. was grateful that there weren't a bunch of Batwing articles, so I didn't have to answer it, those they, questions. The bat, they did not seem to, for whatever which, reason. Which, yeah, you know, it was yeah. very Harrison Ford centric. I just yes, saw, yes. I saw pictures of Harrison as Indy. But everywhere. I think yeah. that press. I want. I just wonder if it yeah. shakes another. Somebody goes. Oh, I, I think it. Those in my I think it definitely yeah. does. Whether it's one that has such impeccable. Yes. Screen matching and whatnot. Who knows? But I do think yes. it will. I think it will. Uh, I think it will pull one out. Um, so that was What's my new props for you, Dave. Yeah, so, yeah. So I actually I will I'll go in order. Uh, I, I guess I technically bid on three things and I had two wins and a loss. Um, uh, I, I won the first item of the day, which was the 2001 patches, Wonderful. which uh, I was really excited about. Um, in hindsight, and I realized this after the fact, and I guess this is my own fault. I think I was the only bidder and I probably, I guess, could have not bid and then seen if there was a deal to be had afterwards, but it's sort of in the moment I was just like, yeah, I want that. So you should anyway, have cut the my, bid, Dave. I cut bid. Exactly. 9,000. But, uh, uh, I was very happy to get that. I, it's, for me, no, it's uh, in the grand scheme of that movie and what I think I could get or what is out there, I just don't think I'm going to be in that fight the next time, you know, a helmet or a ship shows up. And this is this is very good. I'm very pleased yeah. with this. Yeah. Uh, Great. Get. I didn't yeah. know that. I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I forgot to ask yeah. and I didn't know. And yeah. you know, it's funny. I had gone and seen it. I think I may have mentioned this. I had taken my son to see it at part of that, uh, American cinematique, uh, 70 millimeter mm -hmm. festival. They had a showing of it. And, uh, and I, and I've, you know, I've seen it a couple of times on big screen, but saw it again and with him and whatnot. And just, I don't know, just, it, it sort of put the bug in my head a little bit, maybe more than even usual, just having seen it more recently. Um, and having stared obviously at a lot of, uh, forks and knives and spoons and whatnot, uh, I was, I, I, it was just, for me, it was like, this is perfect. Um, I'm actually going to put it right next to you. I have, uh, from jaws. I have one of those, not from this auction, but similar to what was in this auction. I have one of those the Amity, Amity police patches. Right. And I think Amity police patch right next to the 2001 patch will be a very, uh, I will be very pleased with that. Good um, call. and now I'm going to jump to the end of the auction now i'm going to end on my good story um i did put a bid on the uh on ned's uh belt from uh three uh the th yeah. the three amigos uh i was i put an absentee bid in because i was uh i was at the theater today during the auction yeah. um and i uh, i lost uh, i threw a I threw a solid number on it. I threw 5,200 on it, but uh, someone outbid me on it. So somebody, yeah, which was shame. above the, you know, the estimate was two to four. And I, I thought 52 was a, a fair number, but somebody, uh, I think got it for about 55, I think in plus VIG, obviously. So I was, yeah. I was, I was, it was a shame on that. There were a couple other odds and ends of things that I was interested in, but didn't bid on just because I thought the starting bid was a little too high. And those things, along with a bunch of other interesting things, are available on the Prop Store website, PropStore.com, and you can make offers on things after the fact. The one that yes. I've been thinking most about 
um, is those three, I think we talked about them in one of the shows, one of the earlier shows. I, there's those three uh, Boris Vallejo prelims for the yes. Coca-Cola Empire Strikes Back. And they had $20,000 opening bids. And I really do like them. I'd like to have one of them. I only really want one. Each one was 20. And I just, I don't see that number. So we'll see what happens. I'm not sure. My number may be lower than what the... Uh, the seller wants and that obviously that can happen mm -hmm. but uh i wouldn't mind getting one of them but we'll see what happens um so the uh, to answer the 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 big question uh uh yes i did in fact win the uh the biker scout helmet which i'm really really thrilled about fantastic um, and Dave. for fantastic. anybody oh, thank you such I appreciate a that. great yeah. piece and uh i can't think of a single star wars collection where it fits in better well, so I'm, i do do appreciate that um you know i had missed out we had talked about how there's two there were two in private collections i had missed out on the other one when it changed hands a few years ago uh and certainly this is one that i, I i'd known where it had been and had tried to get it once or twice um and it ended up in auction and uh and i won it but for anybody that was watching the auction it was it was it was similar but different i guess to that to the indie auction in the sense of the slowness whatever it was really weird i mean there's no other way of putting it was it. Very it, was a little, it was very strange and basically what happened was uh the auction began and nobody was bidding and i wasn't bidding either and you and i were texting and you actually just said plant your flag and bid because you know for a variety of reasons you felt and i think you were right as it turned out you don't want this you don't want to give the opportunity after the fact for a bidding situation or anything like that that someone might come out of the woodwork and and i think you were you were very right about that and i i bid i planted my flag right. and i bid so it was a little weird and slow at the beginning when no one else was bidding and then i finally bid and then once i bid was where it really got nuts so because i guess apparently there was another bidder that prop store was that was on a plane and prop store was trying to get a hold of and i don't know all the details either getting a hold of the person or that they were trying to get a hold of the assistant and the assistant was trying to get a hold of the person on the plane and they could not get a hold of that person and apparently that person had not wanted to put a number in before the auction you know wanted to live in the moment and you know whatever and you know not you know see what happened and all those you know i guess fun auction things but uh but they could not get them and it was interesting because for me on the phone actually with chuck i was on the phone with chuck i was there on the phone just going going once going twice sold going once going twice <laughs> sold going once Very going good. twice sold. And i just good. kept saying that into chuck's ear and then at some point i was trying to yell it through the phone at the auctioneer going once going twice sold and i must have done that what seemed like four thousand times so it seemed i was saying me... it in my in my car i was dry we, we were we were we were driving and i made my wife drive so that i could follow <laughs> the auction because i wanted to see that 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 lot was coming can up. i and ask also you a my question lot was, was oh right your lot was coming soon yeah how long was it because on my end it seemed like it seemed like 20 minutes but i don't it think was it really very was. long i mean it was i it was it was minutes but minutes in that situation seemed yeah. like scores of minutes yeah. at the time yeah i would guess it was five minutes i mean it was it was it was extraordinarily long and i I, I i was frustrated i could feel knowing you i could feel your frustration and look i get it's a very the tough situation to do I, I'm as gonna, well yeah, as they I'm gonna can say... for a consigner of a big piece like that. And you want to, if you have a phone bidder, you want to do everything you can to reach them. And you want other phone bidders, they were clients of the auction house, to see you going through every iteration. I wasn't even to reach. thinking about that, but I will certainly say if it's my piece, I want them trying to get a hold Doing of that. the missing yeah, bidder. for sure. And I'll go one step further. If, if I'm the guy, and I think I was the guy once, or I think I've told this story on one of those Y wings, it was one of the non studio scale Y wings. I think it was a Jedi Y wing or yeah, something like yeah, that. I remember this. I was down for a phone bid and I just got lost in a Veep meeting and they definitely stopped to try and get a hold of me. So I, yeah. I, I certainly I remember that. Yeah. I remember no. That. So I, I mean, the honest answer is yeah. I, I am not, I, I want to be really clear. I would want that for me. I would want them to try and get a hold of me. It's just not never fun being the yeah. guy on the other end. So yeah. Okay, yes, go ahead. Th this happened to me, but um, 
it also benefited me. So when I was bidding on the Blade Runner gun, this is now six years ago. Um, You're talking I about was, the, the stunt pistol. The stunt pistol yep. that uh-huh. I have. Yeah, I was live at at the uh, Profiles in History. I was sitting on the floor in Calabasas at the auction floor. Uh, so I was able to see the full field of what was going on and a couple lots up to it. I saw a bunch of people picking up the phone and I said, oh, Jesus, I'm going to be like, you know, it's going to be like phone heaven here. Right. But I was on the floor and um, and there was somebody I was bidding against somebody online. And the whole way that was going, I was because I was watching like the the Internet bid reporter was like over here on the right and on the left was the phone bank. And there were people on the phone, but nobody was bidding. So I'm guessing they were maybe calling them for future lots or, you know, or Or maybe the number rolled past what they were thinking. Yeah. But there was one guy who was frantically. Oh, like dialing, dialing, dialing dialing and shit. Oh, interesting. Flipping through a book and dialing. And I knew it was they had somebody that they just couldn't reach for that moment. And look, it's hard to say, but I I have to believe that at the very least I saved a bunch of money by that that call not going through. And look, that's that's the nature of live auctions. And that's part of the excitement of it. Um, I will also say another thing, which is just as a collector, I can't imagine ever being in a place where I'm about to bid on a quarter of a million dollar piece and I don't have a plan in place. Well, can I tell you something interesting? This is a great point. And this was actually one of the the things, where's the WhatsApp or the, but here's, but here's, this is really interesting. Calling you and saying like you, I'm not going to tell them my match bid, but I'm telling you my match. I am so with you, but here's the thing. There is a new collector in this world. And I think this is one of the points I think that was sort of, I think, you know, having come through this auction season, but talking specifically about this prop store auction, there is a new breed of collector that is very different from us. They can spend the same as us, if not more than us, but they don't have that same like list of must haves. Like they have movies they like, they definitely have things they like, but each catalog is sort of a, uh, a, 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 a new, it's almost like a day one experience. And I don't mean there that like they, they don't have, that they have amnesia. It's not 51st dates. It's just sort of like they take each catalog as it comes and they look through the catalog and go, I like this and I like that. And I like that. And that's what they're after. But what I, I got the sense, and again, maybe I'm putting two and two together. No, the auction and the seller may have been upset that there wasn't more action on the piece, but the guy who was on the phone, Oh, well, next time I'll see what's in the next catalog. Whereas I can only tell you had he bid and bid against me and had it gone over my max and over my double secret max and over my, and over my, my triple secret, actual double actual max. And then my max plus another bid, you know, had it gone past all of those. And again, we could certainly sit here and go, well, maybe that number would pull out another one from a collection, but barring that I'd have been really bummed out. I would have been I don't want to say heartbroken because that's not maybe the right word, but I would have been really sad because this is something I have been looking to add to my collection for a really long time. And I just get the sense that there is a newer collector out there that is not quite the same way with the, they have movies they like, but I'm not sure they have their master list of pieces that they are tracking that they're trying to find. Yes, and, exactly. And, and methodical as you right. and I are. Yeah. And yet certainly in any given auction could run you up or beat you or, you know, whatever it would be like, like it's not a, a lack of desire or a lack of loving the stuff, just not that same that yeah. that list that you and I are sort of always chasing in our heads kind of a thing, yeah. which I think is a really fascinating sort of thing. And I was one of the things that I, I, I guess came to light maybe a little bit from this experience of uh, what happened with the, uh, with the biker scout helmet, because obviously yeah. I'd have been, if I'm on the plane, I'm heartbroken, but also if I'm on the plane, you're bidding for me or they've yeah, got a number. Yeah. We've or, talked yeah. and like we, there's a, there's three plans in place years the, ago. And I, I think or, I've told Dave, yeah. if that, if like, unless you were like flying to your like child's wedding, I imagine you don't fly on that day. Like it well, goes as far I as will that. Tell a story just to tell a story years ago. And I'm talking, I was on Seinfeld. So I'm going to say, it was 96 or 97, but you might have to, we'd have to look in a catalog. Uh, 
Bonhams used to be, they took over an auction house here on Sunset Boulevard in LA, Butterfield. So for a while there was right. Butterfields, then it was Bottom and Butterfields, and then they just got rid of the Butterfields name and it's Bottoms. But when they were Butterfields, they used to do movie prop auctions, poster auctions, et cetera, like as Butterfields. Mm -hmm. And in one of those auctions, the Howard Chaykin original painting for the Comic Con Star Wars poster came up, and it was ah, yes, one of my favorite I, yeah. pieces of yours. And I yes. can't remember there was something funny about it at the time, which was I feel like it wasn't maybe in a prop auction; it was in like a different auction. So I felt like there was some advantage, like people you had to be looking for Chinese like porcelain. It, yes, exactly. It was in uh, old wood cabinets, and that you no, know, it was definitely it was either in a illustration auction or a comic auction or maybe a movie poster auction as a piece of original art. But I guess at the time I thought to myself, this should have been in a prop auction. Anyway, it's too long ago for me to remember the specifics, but the auction was, I believe on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and I was flying home to New York city and I got on the plane and I landed, basically I was going to miss the auction. And so Kelvin was me. Basically, uh, he was he knew my number and he was absentee bidding for me on the phone, but they didn't know it wasn't me because, you know, they don't know me. It's just a voice. So Kelvin was me. And I remember I landed at about I think I was like on a, you know, a 6 a.m. flight. So I landed at whatever time that would be like, you know, two, two in the afternoon or something and immediately called him because that was like, you know, whatever three hours earlier in LA and he had the auction on one phone and me and his other ear and they were like two lots away. And so I was on the phone as it was happening, but the prep was there for me not to, wow. I mean, I would have won it regardless, but I, I ended up on the phone and that's, I mean, I, again, that I think is a difference between our level of crazy and maybe this newer collector. And again, I, I don't, I, I, there's no, neither good nor bad. It just, it's just an, it's, it's fascinating to me. It's baffling I guess. Yeah. To me. Well, I, I don't disagree with that. I, 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 I guess maybe on the level of whoever these collectors are, the money, whether it's coming out of, you know, the stock market or Bitcoin or whatever, it's just on a different scale where the money doesn't mean the same. I don't know that they can be as more casual or, or they just like a lot of things. I don't know. Yeah. I, sure. But for me, it's like, I don't know. Like, I can't imagine going through the effort and just being casual about something like that. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm chasing a biker scout helmet because I'm incredibly passionate about a biker scout helmet and return of the Jedi. I'm not, I, you know, I, but again, that's sort of what I was saying about like, well, that was a cool piece in the catalog as opposed to, I've been looking for one for the last 20 yeah. years. I don't know. It's just a different way of thinking about and it. I it's really that, interesting. Yeah. That delineation. Um, so the, the, uh, conclusions, uh, what yeah. did you notice? Um, you know, it's uh, funny. I, I, I'll start with one thing. The, the sell through rate sort of seemed to be about the same. When I was watching, I felt like more things were passing, but when I looked at the end of each day, I, that was incorrect. It was basically what it's more or less been one way or another. I think so. Yeah. And I think, I think that a lot of things, they are quickly doing a deal you know, after the fact, that because, may be true. Cause the list has definitely gotten smaller, but I'm yeah. talking about when the day ended and I looked very quickly to go, how mm -hmm. many didn't sell each day. It was like, you know, there was a page or two, a page and change of listings, but like that seemed par for the course. Yeah. However, yeah. I do think in the prop store model, as opposed to the heritage model of starting at these lower numbers, mm -hmm. We were we saw a tremendous amount of one and done bidding, and that yeah. just I think at this day and age is the way these prop store auctions are going to go. I realize with the Biker Scout there could have been more bidding, so let's not count that one. But on a lot of these pieces, even things that got you know good numbers like the Nostromo did sell, yeah, one and done. You know, big numbers, one but bidder. With Nostromo, and done. I felt like. I felt like that was a price tag on the Nostromo, whereas with the Batwing, sure. I felt like that really was the estimate. Like they did think that it was somewhere between there. And with the Biker Scout, I thought that was the estimate. And frankly, well, with the I Indy Hat, I thought that was the estimate. 
And I'm not disagreeing. I do think their estimate is where they would like it to go. The higher number is where they would like it to go. But you're absolutely right. We can name certainly the pieces where it went higher. I mean, I'll, the I'll ghost, tell you, my, ghost my, face my went higher. That ghost went, face higher. went higher. I mean, there was my stormtrooper blaster. Yeah. That was a price tag because yes. that's what I needed in order to justify moving on from that piece. Absolutely. And like, but I, I think there are a lot a, of pieces like that yeah, in the auction. Yeah. And I wasn't yeah. looking for a jackpot. I wasn't looking, I wasn't trying to, you know, market manipulate or anything like that. I was doing the, I, I will be happy if this sells at one bid. I will be very happy if it goes two or three bids higher than that and, and anything beyond. So I was thrilled when, you know, you, I think, uh, I think you texted me that, or we were talking, you had called me because <laughs> the crazy biker scout thing had just gone. So, you, so I was, because I was watching on my phone. So I had to, I, I let go of that to speak to you. So you were actually giving me the, the blow by blow, sold. On, yeah, on, yeah. yeah, and and which I was th- I was thrilled by, and it you know, immediately you know reduces my invoice, which yes, which of course, I'm, of course. I'm I'm thrilled by. But do you think about and this is this is just this is the question, and I don't think there's an answer. I just continue to wonder on on some of these good items like your like your gun, like your like your like your uh, stormtrooper gun. And again, I don't know how you do this because obviously the the downside is it doesn't sell for the number you want. You got the number you wanted, huzzah, and it's over. And and the only way of doing it is to, you know, time machine and we go backwards. I just continue to believe on some of these items and I'm happy to be wrong, but I I guess I'm happy to be wrong as long as it's not my piece. Um I do continue to believe on some of these items that if the no, if the starting number was a little lower that I don't know that like some bidding could beget a higher number at the end of the day that people get pot committed rightly or wrongly. Yeah. We saw, we saw that in the, in the planet, planet Hollywood auction, but look, I think Dave, it's a rock and a hard place because planet Hollywood is much more willing to just sort of say, okay, you know, we're selling the inventory. No, absolutely. We want all this gone. We want this all gone. Yeah. Your average consigner does not want to live in the average consigner wants to make a number. But what I was curious about though, is could you do a reserve auction where you don't move it up to one under the reserve or there are legalities connecting to that? Meaning there is a reserve that perhaps doesn't get met, but just a lower number. I, I don't know. I continue to believe bidding begets bidding. So I don't know. That's my three. I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. Uh, totally agree. Um, I, um, I'm just thinking of other lots that I sort of knew that, that stood out to me. I was surprised, Dave, that the um, Necronomicon didn't sell. I, I was very that surprised smells. by that. I really do Offline. hope someone grabs that. Yeah, that is one of the probably the best pieces in there. I think that was one of our uh, favorite things that yeah. we handled on that day. And you and I, not being horror fans, but understanding how important that piece was, just appreciating it, just appreciating it. Absolutely. I was also surprised by some of the Gladiator stuff not selling. Yeah. Um, now I think one. I, I think maybe one piece has subsequently sold, but I believe for the moment the white Joaquin Phoenix armor still hasn't sold, yeah. and the uh, the screen matched uh, Russell Crowe armor still has not sold. I think some yeah. of the other pieces have, and I was surprised by that too. I was also surprised, given they've been very strong of recent. But you also have to wonder maybe the those two people that are bidding those things up already have those things because there are a bunch of examples out there. Sure of some of these. And I also wondered in the back of my head when I saw the passes, I was like, maybe this was better suited for the November auction when like gladiator trailers are coming at you every week. I mean, maybe this was a touch early to exploit the That's gladiator fever. Uh, you know, I don't know. Look, that movie is so strong and should stand up on its own. It shouldn't matter that there's a, you know, a legacy sequel or whatever you want to call it coming. Uh, but that, that was in the back of my mind that it's just the, the press machine hasn't, hyped it up yet whereas with with beetlejuice that hype machine is very alive right now and that book you know that book sold for thirty thousand dollars yeah thirty four six fifty with the vig and you know i knew it was going to go over 10 I, I guess i'm not shocked but boy oh boy what a gorgeous piece and congratulations to yeah. who the winner is i never yeah. threw a bit i never threw a bid i, I, never I, I was i was yeah. hovering and and it went so fast that i didn't click and i was still reeling from uh buying a uh six foot uh uh bat plane so 
I, I did, I did not bid. Um, but I also it, wonder if this is one that shakes another yes, out of another or more or better. Even, I don't even know. Right. Uh, by the way, the ACE Rothstein, uh, sunglasses, $10,000, which I am, uh, I am going to take personal pride and say that we did that. I think, I we, think we did that. We I drove that, that market. Is, we are driving the ACE Rothstein sunglass market. Yeah. Now they are not only screen used in casino, but also screen used on the stuff dreams are made of. So. <laughs> We definitely drove that price. Um, uh, I was sort of, I thought a lot of the alien stuff was really nice. I, you know, in an, I love that face hugger from the first movie, yeah. which went on the low, you know, went on the low end of the estimate. It, it went for the, the, the $60,000 opening bid. I, I thought it was beautiful. I wish that had been a day two piece. I was very surprised. Again, a, a very nice price, but the, uh, the Spock, uh, tricorder opening bid as well. Uh, yeah. you yeah. know, I just, uh, I don't know. Uh, Alien and Aliens, Dave, felt pretty soft to me, given what we'd seen in, in recent auctions. It just and also, felt... by the way, sitting as we are right now with Alien Romulus made like $100 million this weekend, which is just yeah, good kind for, of wild. Good for yeah. those guys. I will say I, I do not know him at all. I just had a meeting with him. But I met Fetty, uh, the director, okay. probably five, six years ago at this point. Met him over at his office with his producer. And you know, I've been on a million general meetings. I just really liked that guy. Oh, cool. And I like... I could tell that we were kindred spirits. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a collector. The guy just loves, loves, loves movies. And we were talking about a movie that is very, we were talking about a, I will just say a uh, possible remake of something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, that would not surprise you if I was in there taking a meeting on it. It was not alien. Um, but the guy just, he's a, he's an artist, but he uh, loves movies. And it's like, he did not do this movie cynically like i you know he like Agreed. he did this movie because i love alien aliens cool and i think it's awesome that i get to go put, put my you know put my stamp on the alien franchise and do my alien thing and and i just think i haven't seen the movie yet but i think that just bleeds through in the trailers and you, you can you can just tell this was made by somebody who's very passionate about it's, this world I, I got to see it uh on tuesday night so a couple of days before it opened they did a sneak showing a, a double feature actually again at the american cinematique uh where they did alien on the big screen 35 millimeter print of that which was just fantastic to see that again really gorgeous new print awesome and then followed by a screening of alien romulus so i got to sort of see that and i had a lot of fun sitting through it um I, I will say there's definitely a point or two where it just where like some of the Prometheus shit sort of circled back around and it was all I could do not to sort of stand ampules. up and boo. Ampules. It was uh, Ampule Ooh. City. Black Ooze Ooh. and Ampule City. Um, it was very fun. I thought the top was really good. I thought the back end was very enjoyable. The middle gets a little squishy, but it was fun to sit through. And uh, right. and, and I'm definitely, looking forward to yeah, it. definitely fun, I guess I will simply say. It was very fun. I liked that the lead actress was really good, too, from uh, right. Civil War. Anyway, worth hmm. seeing. I guess I see what you mean. Those numbers, I guess, maybe could have been a little bit higher on some of those other pieces. Um, you know, I think there's been a world of there were a couple of collectors that we'd heard about going very hard after alien stuff or alien and aliens and i guess they've gotten what they want maybe they've been sated yeah, yeah i think yeah, so they, and there, there wasn't anything i mean uh, on the aliens on the sequel side there the, wasn't anything particularly strong but in, on but alien the there was a hugger and an astromo right. and no that's true but on the alien side i mean ten thousand dollars for a pulse rifle sling and seventy five hundred yeah. for hicks's dog tags i mean those are solid yeah. numbers yeah those are those are good numbers yeah. I, I had i i pushed that sling number up Oh, did you? I, yeah, I was bidding. I, I, oh. I have a, um, I have two. I'm lucky. I have two pulse rifles, but I only have one sling. So I, I was. Ah, kind I did not know that. I know who won it. So you, uh, you pushed him up a little bit. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you afterwards. Ooh, yeah, ooh. I didn't realize. I, I think had I no might know who that is. Yeah, okay. you never mentioned it, so I never thought to yeah, ask. Yeah, I, I just, it was, enough. it was an impulse in the, in the moment. I mean, I didn't cost him too much money, but so, um, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I, I, I didn't. I was surprised that there was no pre-bidding on it. So I was, I was keen. There was no pre-bidding on the lot at all. So I was following the lot very keenly that day, hoping that it might fly under the radar a bit, but good, goodbye. They're, they're wonderful. And they really, they're really, really cool. Yeah. Tie the room together in a, in a, in a good way. Um, b bunch of the Batman stuff sold well, uh, which I yes. thought was very cool. Uh, the, the penguin for almost $20,000. Uh, so those were some good numbers. The newer Batman movies, the, the, whatever Batman versus Superman, that stuff was more hit and miss. Some unsold, some sold in the lower end. Um, one thing I noticed, which was interesting, they, some of the bigger lots of like the 
the big lot of scripts or the big lot of like Ralph McQuarrie storyboards and whatnot. Um, a lot of some of those passed, maybe they'll, you know, make deals after the fact, you know, excuse me, we made a lot of fun of, uh, what was it? Was it Julian's that had that crazy auction where like every storyboard was one lot, but they <laughs> sold them all. Do you remember that? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was just too maybe many of to one go. thing. Yeah. I know. I know. It's probably not a, an efficient way to do anything shipping wise and whatnot. But I did wonder, I did wonder about some of those giant lots where was it just like, I like this, but I just want a page or two. I don't want all of this. And again, I don't yeah. have an answer. Uh, I was just curious about that. Um, I also wonder whether some of what we're seeing is now the fact that there are three auctions instead of two. And it's feeling more like in not a bad way, but just that like there's now a cycle to this to the year and there's an auction in in March and then there's one in the summer and then there's one in the fall that you unless you have something that's totally, totally new and exciting and never been seen before that you're going to have a lot of this sort of, you know, one or two bids or three bids and then we move on. And it's more, yeah, you know, more like, I don't know, like a, like a, a heritage comic art auction where you just kind of, you know, it, it it's more commoditized in, in a way. Um, well, I think the three auctions are certainly having an effect. I think the three auctions and the three auctions only getting, well, I should say three auctions here at Prop Store and then obviously uh, other people having their auctions. So yeah. a lot of auctions, I think, is the answer. Uh, I think the large number of items is, I don't know. I think, you know, it's just, it's it's working against a little bit. I mean, again, things are still selling. I just wonder if if things were a little more curated, if there would be a little more action. I don't know. I, I You know, this is one of those it's like hard to prove the negative. Do you know what I mean? We can sit yes. here and go, whatever I, they, they, they run analysis. You know, I know this about both prop store and heritage. They run analysis. They have numbers they want to hit and they are doing X number of pieces in the auction and they are hitting their numbers. And if they weren't, they would change it. So obviously right. they are happy with how they are doing from my perspective though. When you are seeing things like, boy, interest, just certain interesting things like, Maybe it's just time to not put any Breaking Bad pieces in for a while or Better Call Saul pieces. Like, take a break there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. maybe, you know, again, I, I don't have a perfect answer. I'm just sort of, there were certain things like some of those big lots of scripts and storyboards and whatnot that maybe there's got to be another way of selling some of that. Do you know what I mean? I'm No one loves Ralph McQuarrie more than me, but there was a lot of Ralph McQuarrie stuff that wasn't Star Wars. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of that stuff is still sort of sitting around around, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how you, you know, how you deal with that. Do you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. Those were some of my, my questions of just sort of uh, things also that have at this point now appeared in a lot of auctions, you know, uh, I think it is now sold after the fact, but like that McCoy was in the Greg Jean auction and now, and then popped up in this auction and didn't get a bid, although it sold very quickly after the fact. So it did sell. So good for yeah. the seller, but people buying from heritage and sticking it into the next prop store. Ooh, I, I, I could live without that. Do you know what I mean? And then yes, there are certain pieces this time that we, you know, we're seeing the third and fourth time, like, the Blade you know, Runner shirt. That Blade Runner shirt keeps coming around. I don't know what the right number is, but boy, that if ever there was a piece that I think would benefit from some lower bidding to get it to get it going, to see who wants it. I mean, that's that you know, that's I guess that's my sense of it. I, I don't have that perfect answer. It's but. funny because I, I no longer want it because obviously my Blade Runner collection went in a uh, better direction for me because now it's oh, a more wow. more your Blade Runner collection went in a wonderful direction. Yeah, yeah. more more complete. Uh, thank you. More complete uh, suit costume that I have going. Uh, but um, years ago, and I don't think I ever made an offer. I think it was just a conversation. Uh, on I'm sort of laughing now. Very on this shirt. Yeah, because oh, when oh. it first passed, because they wanted a. I think it. It. I want to say it was in the in the UK auction. So I think it was in pounds versus dollars. Right. If I'm remembering that correctly. Um, but um, was the initial it, number closer to a hundred thousand dollars? I think I, for what I have to go back and look for whatever reason, I think the initial number was 50,000 pounds and oh. now we're down to $40,000, which is a you know, fairly, okay, big I guess difference. I thought it was more, but, but I when I was having the, Hey, is there an offline deal to be had? My number was more in this range and it, 
still then, wasn't then, yes. then and right. they didn't take and it, it, then, and, yeah. and not they but the consigner but it was just like oh, i don't think that's gonna fly i again i don't think it was ever actually an offer and now i've moved on because i i don't need it anymore but i did like the idea of having two examples of the you know the four deckard shirts you know having yes. two of the four i did like that idea but anyway in the world of comic art and i don't know if this extends to movie props but in the world of comic art we see things where somebody like puts something in auction, it doesn't sell and it moves it to another auction. It doesn't sell and then puts it on eBay and it doesn't sell and then puts it on their comicartfans.com site and it doesn't sell. And, you know, maybe they start to bring it down a little bit, but they've tried to sell it so many times that at some point or another, it almost, it's like they've, they've damaged the piece. I, and I, I don't mean right. it's like, like that there's something wrong with the piece. It just, it gets that sort of, that unsold taint. And I do, yeah. I, I, I guess I do worry a little bit. It's I not mean, fresh. Yeah. Like that, that you lose a little the magic and I don't have an answer. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, what else hit you? Anything else? I was very sad, but maybe just too many of that. Those, uh, that those, uh, forgive me, those matte paintings from the Matt, uh, the Matthew, your, yeah, your, 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 yeah, your yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Blade Runner sold, but not a lot yeah. of the other ones did. And I mean, I think it's a beautiful, they're beautiful. I just, maybe just too hard to sell. I thought that was a yeah, shame. Un yeah. Unwieldy, but yeah, it's, it is a yeah. shame. Those are beautiful. Um, maybe we, uh, maybe we, cl maybe we close with a slightly controversial topic. I mean, uh -oh. I, you know, uh, what do you think of the new buyer's premium? I'm not happy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I'm not thrilled. Uh, you know, I, I tried to pretend it wasn't happening until I won. And then when I saw my number base connected, my number vis-a-vis -vis my hammer number, it kind of, well, it hammered me in the face, I guess, basically. Um, I don't, I don't know how else to say that. It really, it was a punch in the yeah. face, I have to say, because if one could argue that I kind of got a little, maybe a little bit of a bargain or whatever, save some money by that guy, not the phone guy on the plane, not getting a hold of me. I mean, like 70, almost like $75,000. I mean, it was, it, it's a big number. It, it's, it's, it's a big. wild number. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I, I, I continue to believe, uh, I don't know. I, it, it, this is where it gets hard. You know, the, the fact that, uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, even I'm taking advantage of time payments and things with them. And uh, it's just these are big numbers. Uh, and yeah. I don't know. They've got to figure out a way to make time payments maybe easier and maybe even even longer. I don't know. It's just these are some big numbers and ways of getting you to get your stuff in to help pay off. I don't know. You know, you were smart. You had a piece in the auction. I I had uh, my that big was random. That was random happenstance. I didn't know well, there was that a bat was, wing. <laughs> right. Well, that was amazing. My uh, my big sale. Wait, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Uh, you're going to laugh. I don't even think we talked about it being mine or if we did. Uh, why is no Internet working? Uh, sorry. Hold on. All right. There we go. Hold on. Here we go. Hopefully everything's still working because it just feels like everything is making a lot of noise. Can you still hear me? Am I still online? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. This All is right, great radio, on. Dave. Yeah. This is what people love. Uh, it's loading, 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 loading. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I put in the star Wars empire strikes back. ILM 35 millimeter film shipping crate and it sold for $1,300 and $1,386. So, well done. Uh, yes, uh, I did it. Uh, knock that off my, knock, that guy's going to take six months to pay for it. Knock that off my bill prop store. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big number. Uh, and I think, uh, I know, and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to classify people this way because I don't love it, but I've heard from a lot of lower end collectors that they are not happy. I mean, just, it is what it is, you know, and yeah. I'm guessing, and by the way, I could be wrong. I, I, in my mind, now that they've broken the barrier, everyone will do the same that like once you can get away with it. So this is not going to be prop store alone. Do you know what I mean? Like I assume bidding, uh, Buyer's premium is going to go up across the board everywhere. That's I imagine, my, yeah. I mean, I think it's just more yeah. expensive and overhead yeah. to run these things. And like, look, I get it. I you know, I don't think that's all you know, immediately going in their pockets, but 
Yeah, it's just a, it's a huge number on top of the huge numbers. At least in, you're in my world. Like we the, these we are not spending less at these auctions no, uh, as time I, marches I on. I dream of a I guess dare I say a there's at least my one dare I say for the show. Um, I wonder if there could be a, more, more of a sliding scale where yes where the buyer's premium I understand it maybe on the thousand dollar items where, yes. you know, the shipping and the time and whatnot, but it does feel like as we're getting into these sort of more stratospheric numbers, I mean, obviously they are making their, that's where they, you know, that's as middlemen, they make their money, but it does feel, I, I, I guess at the end of the day, it is another point. And again, this is auctions in general. This is not prop store. It is another thing that makes me, bid less on the stupid things that I probably shouldn't be bidding on anyway. So I guess it's a good thing, but it definitely keeping you honest, Dave. Yeah. Trying to keep me a little bit honest because the, like I said, this, the numbers are woo. So yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I do think we should end on, uh, dare I say a couple of good points. Um, I mean, I think, you know, uh, that, uh, back to the indie hat for four seconds, uh, just some major record breaking prices, you know, even with all the things we want to bitch about and complain about that are just pretty incredible to see, um, you know, just, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I, good for them, I guess. I mean, I, I, I don't love it either, but good no. for them. Yeah. No, I was, I was, I was glad to see the Nostromo sold. I mean, they've, you know, prop store did the Lord's work in, in, bringing that thing back to life. And I think it's, you know, it's been in their collection for basically as long as they've been in Los Angeles. And I think they really looked after it and cared for it. So I, I think yeah, it, you know, got good it for back that. looking yeah. wonderful and I'll be very excited. Good I hope, that, end, they got, they got I hope that ends up on. somewhere where we get to see it. I mean, I really yeah. do hope that I, I would yeah. don't know. I was, I was sort comfortable. of saying, are we going to see it? And I didn't really get anything, but uh, we'll, you know, we'll see, yeah. we'll see where it, we'll see where it ends up. Um, Whoever gets it though, paint the wall yellow and put that yes, so, in front um, of it. God, that would so be important. beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, any any regrets? Anything you wish you'd thrown a bid on? The numbers you saw no, after the no, fact? No, I, um, I, I flirted with bidding on the Kurt, Kurt Russell hat from Tombstone at the end, but I just, I, you know, I have the gun. I didn't need it. And I'd spent so much money already that day. No, I'm, 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 I, I, that's, I, I that's, hewed to my. I, I have a long list of things that like I wouldn't mind owning, but not owning, not owing the money on top of what I owe sitting here at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I wish I could have gotten a bunch of stuff, but yeah. Yeah. But no, I mean, I, I, no, I was very happy with how I walked away. I got the best piece that I was hunting for. Uh, I got it under my max and I sold my other giant piece. So, you know, good, good day for me. And I, I imagine you have to be thrilled. I am truly thrilled. Uh, again, you know, with, with all apologies to plain guy and whatever, um, uh, you know, what, what can I possibly say? I mean, this is the, this is sort of, this was the piece I had been hunting for, for a really long time. Again, knew, I knew where this one was. I knew where the other one was. The other one wasn't going anywhere. I made runs on this one and had never gotten anywhere on it. Um, and, uh, was just really thrilled to, to land it and be able to put it with, uh, you know, I now have the, the stormtrooper example from each of the three movies, which, uh, Excellent. uh, really, really just exciting to sort of have it next to the, uh, the snow trooper and obviously the, the, the regular classic stormtrooper. Yeah, classic as well. stormtrooper. So, yeah. So very, really excited. It really felt like for once I'm not looking back on it going like, what did I buy? You know, it's like, Oh yeah. no, that's, that's no. pretty darn good. Yeah. I'm I'm proud of you, Dave. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, what's next after Prop Store's Summer Entertainment Memorabilia Live Auction? Well, I don't Prop know. Store. I don't know. Tell me, Ryan. <laughs> well, Prop Store just announced its U.S. What? Summer Poster Live Auction no. running through Dave. Hang on, September twelfth and thirteenth, twenty twenty four. The catalog is now online. Holy the auction shit. features an incredible selection of over 800 rare posters, with some making their first ever appearance at auction and others resurfacing, resurfacing after more than 30 years. I did see that King Kong poster and it blew the my King mind. The King Kong I poster is insane. It really it, I, is I, good. I love yeah. it. And I was like, thank goodness. Yeah. I just no. bought a bat wing. No, because... just it was just sort of like I looked through that poster and could not have put it into the recycling bin quicker because I was just like, if this is in the house, I Do could get yeah, it. Get, it was keep crazy. it away. Yeah. yeah, keep it away from uh, it. go online at props.com to view the entire catalog and bid. Highlights include a stunning selection of signed horror classics and notable posters from both American and international cinema, including a highly sought after one sheet poster from King Kong nineteen thirty three, as we were just talking about, estimated between a hundred and two hundred thousand. 
Other notables include one sheet posters from the Wolfman 1941, estimated 60 to 120,000, and The Public Enemy 1931, with an estimate of 50 to 100,000. Yeah, that's a pretty good movie, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more recent favorites like Back to the Future Part Two, uh, the Chex- Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original from 1974, and the Night of the Living Dead are also featured, along with numerous posters autographed by cast and crew members. The auction showcases a remarkable collection of posters from acclaimed Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. Great, now I'm gonna have to look. I've wanted a Yojimbo poster forever, forever, and uh, uh, <laughs> alongside a superb Prop collection. Profstore.com. Yep. <laughs> British posters from the James Bond series and Alfred Hitchcock classics. Uh, Star, Star Wars, Wars enthusiasts, oh, go ahead. Dave. No, I was going to. I was going to pass it off to you. Oh, Star Wars enthusiasts away. like Dave will have a chance to bid on incredible original trilogy posters up from up from auction up up for auction. I guess is what he meant. I think so. Jesus, Chuck, up for <laughs> auction, including the John Alvin A New Hope 1977 concert poster, which is gorgeous. That was at the preview by the bathroom. Did you see that? It was right. I did. It yeah, was right it between was... the men's and ladies' room. It was a was really lovely. gorgeous version, estimated five to ten thousand dollars. And the early promotional poster by Howard Chaikin, which we talk about in this episode, the original painting, estimated between three to six thousand. Which uh, those things are always gorgeous looking. Uh, bids I can love be placed. That yeah, poster. it's so yeah. good. Bids can be placed online or via telephone during the live bidding, or you can place an online or absentee bid in advance. Printing catalogs are also for sale in the buy now section of propstore.com, or if you go in my blue bin outside our house, there's one sitting in there as well. <laughs> Very uh, good. Good free, luck for finding free, that. For free. It's in there with a bunch of cardboard boxes and some other mail and catalogs. Go on. Yes. <laughs> While you're ordering your prop store catalog at propstore.com, check out all the different things you can purchase in prop stores buy now section. So use your... Are we still doing Ryan this? I thought we we finished this. We we were done. We we, we, we declared the master champion. Ten percent off your buy now <laughs> order and vote for who should be your favorite podcast. Or so use three your time Dave, or use your Dave Tan, winner. and I will go out to my blue bin and I will mail you a free copy of the catalog. Deposed, deposed host Ryan. Please note that the ten percent off will apply to the catalog and everything else you order. So load up your cart and support the stuff dreams are made of. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Please uh, continue to follow, like us, write some reviews. We haven't gotten any reviews on like the Apple podcast app in a while. So some new reviews would be good. Good reviews we'd prefer. Thank you. There's Um, two, you know, there's two bad reviews and they're both so annoying. I won't go into them, but they really do annoy me. Yeah. Um, But, uh, and uh, And please write us and tell us what you want. Yeah. Did you win anything and tell us what you thought and any thoughts you have on the overall auction too, if you sort of, uh, agree with the direction it's going, what you think about the buyer's premium, just anything you want to bitch about or, or praise. We love it. We love it. We love it. So email us at dreams are made of podcasts at gmail.com. Follow uh, us at props podcast. Yep. Follow and us follow us YouTube. our YouTube channel. Uh, and as always, uh, this is uh, Dave Mandel, the winner of the most popular. Uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, real quick. Um, if you no, no cut, no cut, never cut. Uh, look at if you go to the uh, uh, Chris Kessner sent us a beautiful graphic featuring me and the movie Hancock, which we I put did. up I on the social feeds. That. So thank well you, Chris. Done. Well done, Chris. Yeah, uh, I think you the lighted you face in the reflected the reflected, reflected glass one is the best one that's the one i would so hard that's the one i'd put on the wall if i had that yeah. one yeah a big version of that i would put i on did the wall. like you i also did like just because the lighting sort of matches on on these bad photoshops uh with all respect to chris the lighting sort of matches on the one where you're doing the kind of like trump guy point at you know at, at whoever him, at him but it's at, him, yeah. it's at will and i just I, I really enjoyed that but the glass is the, is the winner so well done that's also the image i remember that's that's the handcuff yes, poster the i poster. have and love yeah yeah that's the one on the, on your bedroom ceiling yeah uh uh-huh. we will see Eventually. you guys yeah. next talk week. to you soon bye-bye <laughs>